well. I think it will be difficult now that everybody hungry to attract the attention, but well, I will do my best. Uh, <clears throat> and also because I always was thinking, what should I say? You know, we are coming to different uh, skin of the organization. We are from the United Nations, all private sector. But well, I think I will try to put something nice to see if it's interesting for you. And first, I will say that uh, the international of Paul said that thanks GPC was something successful, as I say, the president of GPC and the director general found, <coughs> uh, helped to, to change uh, the, the perception of pulses in the general public. Yeah? That has been made that we can see now uh, changes in the production and construction of pulses, which we see very positive. positive. <coughs> and this uh, increase uh, on, on pulses, production and construction, <coughs> have been able to change also patterns that are, is, is very important for us. We see that from the nutritional point of view that can help us to enhance the fight against poverty and malnutrition and help to achieve the uh, sustainable development goals one, two, and three. Also, as, as many people have said before, Paul's help to improve the sustainability, what is a, a major issue, as Ellen said, millennials now are paying attention to those issues in which we can also take that into consideration. But what is was the best, and is what I think uh, brought me to be here is that the success obtained by the International Review of Pulses could, be, could not be possible without the good job between the private and public sector. You know? And it was not easy, uh, Cindy and many other people who was for the beginning, but with the time we could come along and we did a very good job. doesn't move. Uh, uh, now, I need to go back. And then, this is depend how we see the things. We have, for us at FAO, we have some challenges that we uh, face in agriculture. For example, growing population is very difficult. For you, probably, it's not a challenge. For you, it's better. More people, will be more pulses to be produced, more pulses to be sold. But uh, at the end, we need to look how to, to confront those challenges. Also, we know that there has been a reduction in the resilience of production system. And I always like to, uh, unfortunately Gordon is not here, but I would say this example of the Grain Plains in Canada, where back 30, 40 years ago, was a lot of problem with uh, environmental problems, and they start this program to produce pulses, rotations, and have been positive seen. And then I think we can put that also for other areas of the world. <coughs> also, we know, probably you know in all the countries, but we see, we see that there is increased competition for land and water that will make agriculture more difficult in the future. <coughs> and on the impact of climate change, <coughs> and also, the increased price in many countries, probably in the developed countries, it's not so easy to see, but in what I, when I bought my farm a sack of fertilizer, I see how much it costs in Africa a sack of fertilizer. This is a huge difference. And then we need to look for those smallholder farmers, that is the, the clientele that we have, to try to look more independent uh, methods for input and will be producing uh, pulses, for example. And I say that because one of the challenges is the person who was from India said something about productivity of pulses, I think it was you, no? And that is a big issue. If we see here, that is legumes in general, but if we see here how in, in 
um, cereal has been more or less using the same amount of land since the 60s, while legumes has increased the amount of land, but we don't see the same in the production. You see cereal has almost tripled the yield in the last 50 years, while it's not the case of, of legumes. And these pictures look good because soybean is inside. If we will be only pulses, it will be not look that good. Then we need to look at that. We need to improve uh, the productivity of pulses. And <coughs> when we relate to the other problem with the environment, if we see here how this applies for every country in the world, how you have been the land use transitions, and you see you have a natural ecosystem in the moment you start colonizing those ecosystems, you establish agriculture and content intensive agriculture. We even need to create protected recreation area in order to compensate that thing. And I'm not saying now that we need to go back here to smallholder agriculture, but we need to look somehow on a mixture, how to do better agriculture in order to have more, more sustainable and to take it out of resources. And this is the reason we always talk about sustainable intensification, intensification of crop production. Because we, yield is important, but we need to conserve and enhance natural resources because it's from we live, you know? And agriculture is a, a big issue in that way. Also, we need to use efficiency, the resources, because we not also, I always set an example. There are many assessments about uh, phosphorus uh, fertilizer. People say that sources of phosphorus fertilizer will last 200, 300, or 400 years, different de depending on the methodology that you use. But what is sure is one day we'll be finished. That means we need to use those resources very efficiently in order to can keep those. And also, we need to improve livelihood and uh, human well-being. And I put in that because we are uh, mainly focused on small holding farming. And if we see here, if we monocrop maize, this is a case on Africa, we, we can have in a small holding farm and not using any kind of input, 800 kg of maize grain, the grain per hectare. But if you introduce an intercropular bean, like in this case, the yield of the maize doesn't reduce that much, more or less it's kept, and, but at, you have additional 300 kg of bean. This is not only in the home base of the family that is improved, this also because this is more nutritional food available for the family and also, also to sell, no? And why you, you think, I, you will may think in, I'm uh, putting this scientific information, is <coughs> if we see here, this graph talk about cereal production in the world. And if you see here, are the, the most advanced countries producing cereal with more than six ton per hectare. <coughs> and this, this best producing country produces only 12.5% on the whole production in the world. If we know to the small scale farmer, Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, and Central America, very low yield, we are talking about less than two uh, ton per hectare, <coughs> cover more or less 20% of the global production. If we get those smallholder farmers to make something like we did in the intercropping, we are producing a, a very large amount of pulses. We will be producing of legumes in general. That means it could be convenient for everybody, for the farmer, for the trader, for the producer, for everybody. And we, in order to achieve those, we, we need to, to, to talk on countries, representative and to the governments. You know? 
For that, we have created a, a policy maker guide in order to, they have the evidence that they need to take the decisions, no? how to improve those smallholder farmers. <coughs> and this, this, what we call safe and grow, is because we will be saving some inputs, but it's still growing. No? That is the idea behind that. Is to, to the key issues is to have to put in function the ecosystem services in order to, to have those positive issues that we can get, optimize the use of input that is very important. I'm not telling here that we won't use any inputs because we know that it's very difficult, but we should optimize the use of those inputs and conserve and enhance out of natural resources. <coughs> This is not something that is easy, easy to make, and it's not the same if you are in the Midwest, or you are in Europe, or you are in Africa, or in South America. That means this kind of technology needs to be adapted to a specific condition, or to a location, and or a scale. It's not the same, I will propose something for far, farming 5,000 hectares, or one half a hectare, no? And what is important that we have learned during these years is that Increase, increasing production is not sufficient. As uh, I think one of the major mes messages broadcast that said, environmental is not be, uh, uh, about not doing bad, but about doing good. Yeah? And then here it is not only sufficient to, to have a high yield. We need to combine a high yield with a sustainable measurement. Yeah? And also, this is important that not one size fit all. We cannot, what is for single companies, not the same that for Ellen, we need to look each case on each case basis. And, but also, it's not easy making something sustainable, then because it requires a lot of knowledge. Every farmer, every person is here that is in connection with farming, they know if you make a small changes in the production, that will cause a lot of problems, that you need to get information in order to can go again in your path. No? And what we are talking here is about diversification. And in a smallholder farming, that was relatively easy. We are talking about bringing legumes into the system. We know in smallholder farming in many parts of the world, they crop mainly cereals. And the idea is to they include uh, to those cereals legumes, in, in this case pulses, which will help to, to, to maintain the soil health and biodiversity and to improve the nutrition. It was one of the most important issues. We know as we, what we call the Green Revolution, was pushing for most green uh, cereal production. And now nutrition of these smallholder farmers deficiency. It has some deficiencies. <coughs> and then, how will be the how we see the the, the way forward is definitely uh, you said we need to invest and to see how can we improve national international research on policy. That is, is an, an issue where we need to, but not only improve. We have many actors, and now small things are made upon in many parts of the world. We need to create kind of a network that we don't need to repeat things, you know? If India probably is looking all for the same chickpea that is produced also in the United States, and we can make a, re a network, it will make better use of the funds available for that res uh, research. Also, we need to, to try to increase the knowledge on pulses for nutrition, all the things, but we need to start for those millennials that uh, Ellen talked about, you know? We need to, young people need to learn how good it is to eat pulses, no? And then we also need to, to provide with smallholders with some uh, knowledge. We, one of the things we have seen, many countries now believe that it's not need to have an extension services. And unfortunately, that is a, a big problem because smallholders are let alone. Uh, and then, and also, not only on the extension, but also on 
providing input. We know, for example, in Africa, it's very difficult to get access to inputs because they are very expensive. The value chain of those uh, fertilized uh, pesticides are very not working properly and then made things very expensive. And no access to credit, all the things that the smallholder farmer always have. And also, one of the things we realize is GPC uh, put something to, to try to get some information about food composition, what is very important, you know, if we can promote the nutrition of those uh, pulses. But we saw that it's a lot of, uh, in many species, we lack of that information. That means we need to work toward trying to get that information. Also, uh, somebody talked about that, I don't know if it was you, but nowadays uh, we have seen that pulses are very difficult to, to sell, just because the people are difficult to food or anything, many things, and then we need to, to work is toward convenient food on pulses. That is very important. I think I was talking with a, a company in Italy and they say they already got that and they are working, making research to produce new products based on pulses that uh, are more nutritious. And that needs to be also company with some research, a specific research on reducing the cooking time of pulses. I know in USDA they have started doing some research, but we need to to continue on that because in the moment you have a black bean that you can cook it in half an hour and you put it with your rice and will both be ready, then we have a gain. And then this is the message I wanted to bring today. Uh, I think so this was my last slide, but this is doesn't like me, I guess. <laughs> no. But I think this was my last slide. Thank you very much, and I, I hope you enjoy.